Okay, now with the Bohr interpretation of the wave function, namely that the wave function squared is equal to the probability density of uh, finding the particle somewhere in space, with that interpretation of the wave function, we can uh, get some properties that this wave function must have. First of all, the wave function must be single valued. What does that mean? Single valued. Well, a function is single valued if this is a function, let's say this is the make it a, uh, the wave function, and we'll make it a function of just one coordinate here to make things easy. We have something like this. This is a single valued here. Here is an example of a function that is not single valued. So here is psi of x versus x, if something goes down like this and it comes back on itself and goes back up there, that's not single valued. Over here for each value of x you have only one value of psi. Value of x, you can have this value of psi or this value of psi or this value of psi. This is not single valued. Now why is this a bad property for a wave function? Well as we said, uh, the uh, square of the wave function is a probability density. So suppose we're right here in space at x, this means the pro uh, particle could be, oh yeah, that probability, oh no, wait, it could be that, no, it could be this probability, oh no. So to have the wave function single value guarantees that for some particular value uh, or particular point in space, you have only one probability density. All right, so that's important. Continuous, all right, that's an important property. Again, dealing with the Born interpretation of the wave function is probability density, square of the wave function. So let's uh, put uh, here a continuous wave, uh, function. So here's our wave function here. It's a function of, we'll just do one dimension. Continuous is something like this. All right, continuous. Something that's not continuous. It look, but looks like something like this. Psi of x versus x, so here we go. And then suddenly there's a break. <laughs> so this means that as you're going along and you're calculating the square, the probability density in this region of space, you're okay, but then suddenly it jumps. Oh my goodness, this doesn't make any sense here, so this is not continuous. Another example of a non-continuous function would be, say, psi of x versus x, and you're going along here, and then suddenly from here to here, you jump and go up this way. So this is also not a continuous function. This is not a good property for a wave function. If you take the square of the wave function, suddenly the probability, probability is here, and then infinitesimal distance away, the probability jumps. It's like a rip in the fabric of space and time. That's not a good property for probability density. You want the probability density to vary smoothly across space, not these discontinuous jumps here. And therefore, you'd want the wave function to be continuous, not to be not continuous. Okay, and then let's look at square integrable, integratable. Square integrable means that if you form uh, the square of the wave function, again, what we're doing is uh, taking the complex conjugates, so in case the wave function is an imaginary number, we take a complex conjugate times the complex, this will be um, a real number. So we want, this is the square of the wave function, and we want the integral, we want this to be integrable over some volume of space d tau. Why is that? Well, this represents probability density. If we can't integrate this equation, we can't get a probability density. So, okay, it must be square integrable. So given the Born interpretation of the wave function, the square of the wave function is the probability density, that implies that these wave functions have to have at least these three properties, single valued, continuous, and square integratable.